Before we go into the explanation of the serial position effect, let's try a 30 second experiment. I'm going to present 14 words on your screen one at a time in two second intervals. So your job at the end of the 30 seconds is to write down as many of the words as you can. So now might be a good time to grab yourself a pen and a paper and get ready to record the, the um, 14 words when we get to the end of the 30 seconds. So let's start now. Okay, start writing those words down. Here are the solutions. On the left column, we've got the first seven words. On the right column, we've got the next seven words. So again, pause the video if you need to. If you have a class doing this, you might want to plot your results on a graph and see what type of shape you get on that graph. And you'll probably get something that looks like this if you have a sample big enough. You get a U-shaped graph where we've got the, both the primacy and the recency effect with the low recall of the middle items. So what do we mean by serial position effect? Well, it's when we have a serial list of information and the order that that content was presented affects its likelihood of retrieval. And the two key concepts are, here are the primacy effect, which occurs when we have superior recall um, of the items from the start of that serial list in comparison to the middle items. And the recency effect, which occurs when we have a superior recall of the items at the end of that serial list in comparison to the middle items. In terms of the theory behind why we have a primacy and a recency effect, it's got to do with the differences between both short-term and long-term memory. So in terms of the primacy effect, why do we have a superior recall of those early items? It's got to do with the additional attention rehearsal that those items received. So when you are actually doing that experiment, given the two second interval, that's enough time to go brush and sub vocalize that, or maybe out loud. And then when we got to the second item, you had enough time to go brush lemon. And then we got to the third, and there was still enough time to go brush lemon horse, brush lemon horse. And then we got to paper, brush, lamp, and horse, paper, etc. So we can do that up to a point. And that explains why we have superior recall of those early items because they've received that additional retention multiple times we've actually rehearsed them. And we know this when we have variations of this type of experiment when we reduce either the time that the, of the exposure time to say a fraction of a second or we manipulate the experiment so that each of the words gets the same amount of rehearsal. So you're only able to, let's say, go brush and then the next word lemon is flashed up and we can only sub-vocalise that once, etc. Or we force the participant to just rehearse the letter that's exposed on the screen. And again, we lose the recency effect, the primacy effect, I should say, when that manipulation occurs. But when we have enough time, like I said, two seconds, where we can actually have that additional rehearsal time, that's when we get that higher recall rate. Now, in terms of the recency effect, this has got to do with short-term memory. We're able to hold those last few items in our short-term memory, and as soon as that 30-second exposure time finishes, we go back and we write down those last few words. Now, given the limitations of our short-term memory, we can only do a few of these. Now, what happens when we have a delay of the recall? Given that short-term memory is only up to about 30 seconds, and particularly when we give a distracting task, like let's say a complex mathematical equation, we actually lose the recency effect. So this is a key point. We only get the recency effect when we have free and immediate recall after the presentation of the data. When we throw a delay, particularly when you throw in an interference task, we don't get the U-shaped graph. We still get the primacy effect because those first few items have had that additional rehearsal. There's been a consolidation process, but we know with items that haven't been actively rehearsed, etc., 
and there's no consolidation, there's no elaborate rehearsal, etc. These items simply decay quite rapidly. So again, key points when we have free and immediate recall, we get the graph that's red, we get a U-shaped graph. When we have delayed recall, we only get the primacy effect.